To understand the Ramapo fault line system in New Jersey, you have to have a mix of geography, geology, tectonics, seismology, and earthquakes. I'm going to do that in this video and discuss all about this amazing fault line system. This is the Earth Science Classroom. Its name comes from the Native American tribe, the Lenape tribe, that came down and lived in this area of New Jersey from Connecticut in the 17th century. Now, a fault line is a fracture in the crust, a break in the rock due to stress, strain, and deformation. And the fracture becomes a fault line when there is movement on one or both sides of this fracture. Now, a fault line is where you get earthquakes. Now, this system is a bunch of normal dip-slip faults. Dip-slip means there's an angle, and slip means distance. So, there's an angled fault line between two rock faces, and this is a part of a larger rift basin system, and it has half gravens, which means that one side moves down, creating valleys, and this is a natural demarcation point basically means that there's a natural point of weakness and fracture in the crust caused by something in the past. And now this fault line is moving, occasionally causing earthquakes. To find out the origins and formation of this Ramapo fault line system found in the East Coast of America over states like New Jersey, New York, and Pennsylvania, we have to go back to about 300 million years ago to about 250 million years ago when we had Pangaea. Pangaea is a supercontinent of all the land masses, all the continents stuck together caused by convection currents. And this supercontinent lasted for around 100 million years, which is a long time. And then it started to break apart. And these continents started to drift due to seafloor spreading and continental rifting and divergent plate boundaries formed and we had the emergence of the Atlantic Ocean and the movement of the continents to their current present day locations. Now this splitting of Pangaea created our fault line because when North America was attached or stuck or connected to Africa in order to break it apart you had to literally drag the two continents apart and stretch the crust which is the surface the top layer of the earth's interior the crust which is around 20 to 25 miles thick had to stretch it and break it and the stretching of brittle cold rock creates these fractures and ripping points within the surface and the process of continental rifting, where Pangaea broke up, occurred in different stages throughout a long period of time where the Atlantic Ocean was born and grew and now is a very large or second largest ocean on the planet. But it started in very humble, very small beginnings through a mantle plume rising up and forcing both Africa and North America apart to create this divergent plate boundary, this mid-ocean ridge, and seafloor spreading. And over the course of 50 to 100 million years, both continents, North America and Africa, have been spreading and still are moving apart from each other. So the Atlantic Ocean is growing in size by a few inches or centimeters every single year. Now, in most education systems, you will learn about earthquakes with plate boundaries, where two or more plates come together or diverge or converge or move side to side of each other called, called transform plate boundaries. And the most famous one in the entire world probably is the San Andreas Fault Line on the west coast of America where you have the Pacific Plate moving one direction and North American Plate moving in the next direction. And this transform plate, this sliding, creates friction and energy and releases lots of earthquakes every year. Now there's earthquakes around every boundary every year, about 3,000 every day, and they're mostly around the Ring of Fire and mostly around plate boundaries. But as we saw in New Jersey and other areas of the world recently, we do get earthquakes in areas of the planet that do not have a plate boundary. Now, New Jersey, which is the yellow star there in North America and the east coast of the USA, is nowhere near a plate boundary. And it's on a passive margin, which means that the continent 
and the whole North American plate, which includes a part of the Atlantic Ocean and obviously North America, the continent, which is USA, Mexico, or part of Mexico, and Canada, and also Greenland, which is really owned by Denmark, and part of Iceland. This is all moving as one whole big chunk of crust towards the west, away from the divergent plate boundary, which is the mid-ocean ridge in the center of the Atlantic Ocean. Now, this is where the ocean grew, 180 million years ago, and New Jersey has since moved west thousands of miles away from Morocco and Africa, where they were once attached. So the stretching of the crust happened. Now we are located right by the stretching of the crust where this occurred back during Pangaea times. And that is how we're getting some earthquakes, which we're not anywhere close to a plate boundary. So what is actually happening? This is a normal dipstick fault. So you see the, the crack, the break between the two sides of the crust here on the diagram? That is an angled dip slip. Now one side is moving down, which is the left side, which is our normal dip slip. So in terms of New Jersey and the fault line, the left side would be the coastline and coastal plain. The right side would be the Appalachian Mountains and further west into America. And you have this motion down, this energy being released when they move, which is causing the earthquake. And the earthquake is the release of trapped energy within the rock causing seismic waves to propagate and move through the ground and create all the shaking. Now these waves are in four types. There is the P and S wave going through the earth itself and you have the surface waves going through the surface of the earth which is the L and the R. These are the ones that create the shaking. Now with all of the different levels of what this is, the fault line, Pangaea, the break of Pangaea, and how the, the crust was stretched and how the stretching of the crust when it rifted away from Africa created this fault line between 200 to 165 million years ago. And we still see evidence of this stretching and motion around the fault line through different earthquakes over the course of the last 250 years in northern New Jersey. Now this fault line is the yellow line it does extend down from New York State down through northern Jersey at a southwesterly northeasterly kind of direction and into Pennsylvania and down and through into Maryland Virginia and it kind of connects up to the larger passive margin of this tectonic plate and it divides the really old 1.1, 1.2 billion year old rock to the west in the mountainous and ridge valleys, valley areas and regions to the very much younger coastal plain and Piedmont rocks which are around 165 million years and towards the coastline of New Jersey, Long Island and down the east coast these rocks can be as young as 20 to 30 million years which in terms of geology and Earth's history is extremely young. So you have a billion year old rock on one side of the Rampart Fault Line, and you have rock that's 10, only 10% 10 as old on the other side, about 165 million years. So the mountainous region is mostly metamorphic. Coastal plain, Piedmont, is a mixture of mostly sedimentary with a little bit of igneous intrusions included in there. But you have this amazing fault line that is mostly inactive and does give earthquakes over the course of a larger time scale, 10, 20, 50, 100 years. The largest earthquake recorded in New Jersey was a 5.3, that was in 1783, and recently we had the one in 2024, which recorded a 4.8, 4.7. Still, both large earthquakes for the East Coast, but if you compare that to other areas of, like, say, the Ring of Fire around Japan or Taiwan or Indonesia or Alaska, you get a lot stronger earthquakes because of the tectonics and the mechanisms that are forming these earthquakes. The Rampo Fault Line was an active fault line back when Pangaea split up 
185 million years ago. Now it's just the remnants of energy that's inside the crust moving. And again, we're not really sure how this is occurring and why it's occurring and the time scale. We just know that it is a potential for earthquakes really close to a lot of built up major cities, which includes New York City. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, please subscribe and hit the like button. If you like more on this content, please check out my channel, which has all these videos on earth science.